Hello and welcome back to another episode of the BDB podcast. With me, I have literally what I would say is the mentor of mentors, someone who I look up to, not just because of what you've accomplished, but how you've accomplished it, doing it online and offline, traditional oh, you, and new school, man. Thank so you, welcome Grant you, Cardone you, to the you, show, man. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely. And so first off, I want to just honor the fact that you've been able to do that. The fact that you've been able to not only go with new school business, I've seen you speak on stages, I sell you, see you selling info products, I see you crushing people in that area, which yeah, is yeah, one yeah, thing. Yeah, There's a yeah, lot of people yeah. out there that are good at online marketing. You've, yeah. You've met a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Yet they haven't, don't do traditional style when it comes to investing and then also speaking as well. And you kind of yeah, have this whole yeah. package and you're dominating everyone and everything. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. A lot of people don't recognize like how many different little, you know, I was doing an interview yesterday and the guy's like, well, tell me about this thing. And I'm like, well, dude, that's not the only thing I do. Like, like, I don't know why you keep going back to this thing. It's cause he, that's his space and he doesn't see all the other stuff going on. Yeah. And so, and he's a little sketchy anyway. So what do you mean sketchy? Well, we're, uh, sketchy people, sketchy people can't see everything. You know, I've, I've, I've learned this in my own life and with other people, like people that take shortcuts can't see very well. And, and, and like you, you already, you can see everything I'm doing. You see the e-commerce, you see the traditional, you see the, the sales calls that we make, you see what I'm doing on social, you see the real estate place, you see everything I'm doing. So another person could study everything that I'm doing and not see everything I'm doing because they're sketchy. And they're like stuck right here. They're criminals. They're, 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 t they're taking shortcuts and they're, they're looking for shortcuts and all they see is shortcuts. They, don't, they can't see everything. So the more honest the person is, the more they can see. And the less honest the person is, the less they can see. It's, it's why a thief, a thief you know, robs a house and steals less than he could have made just servicing the same exact house. Right. The guy, the guy would have given more money to like take care of him if he could see. Instead, he saw a watch and took the watch. How often do you see this with your Instagram followers, the people that DM you, the people that email you? They're just thinking right here. and there's, it's, I think even what you're saying is self-sabotage. Like they're sabotaging themselves because they can't see further. I see it a lot with interviewers. Really? Yeah, because I, I get to know the interviewer now, right? I get, I get to meet them. As, as opposed to the Instagram person, I don't get to see them. What do you see in the interviewer? Well, 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 uh, well like I'm saying, like, uh, you know, like, where, where is that person coming from, right? Where, where, what are they doing? Like, are they still learning? Or are they just trying to get an interview done? Like, are they have an agenda to, to like, like giving, doing an interview to me is one of the hardest things a person could do. Like, I hate being the interviewer. I'd much rather be yeah. the interviewed. Um, Cause you got to stay interested. You got to, you got to, you got, you got an agenda you actually want to go over, but what if it doesn't go that way, you know, and, and it goes a different way, like it is right now probably already, right? So, um, and a lot of people can't flow. Like, they get stuck. They get stuck on this agenda they had rather than be, really being there. So it's a difficult thing, you, you know. So. Well, you've been on so many shows that are just agenda-based, though. Hey, Grant, how would you grow up? You grew up in this area, yeah. and you have a twin brother, and you yeah, go to yeah. your – and so even for me, Tell I say... Tell me about your upbringing. I'm like, my guys want to be a fly on the wall. And that's yeah, what I hope yeah. they're being right now is that yeah. I'm interested in, yeah. in what you have going on. And I have a few things that I want to glean from the interview. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully you're getting something from it. But I don't really care because this is, this is my time yeah, to buy yeah, some yeah, of this. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, uh, no, if you benefit, they will. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to the things that you've done, <laughs> I want to know, you could have easily made enough money to live the lifestyle that you want without gaining influence. A lot of times I see that fame is looked down as someone who just wants their ego stroked. They just want attention. They want to be seen as something. And I truly think that influence over fame, though, is the ability to change someone's life and also make more money. I look at the businesses that have been popping up. Facebook, you think of Mark, right? You think of Amazon. You think of the CEO. And so with you, what was the reason why you started to go into this influence game as well and put yourself out there to build a following what was your mindset behind that? Well, we, you know, I really wasn't thinking about building a following then. I was thinking about, you know, I needed customers. <laughs> like, like, this wasn't some grand plan. Like, I, I, I'm the most transparent person out there. Like, I wanted customers. I wanted. I have a good. I have a. I have a a, a, a big product lineup of things that that I know have helped me and and that when used it, that way help other people. So, uh, I use Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. 
YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter to get customers. There's no other reason for me to be there. Like, if you see me on any of those platforms, I have one goal to make you my customer. It's the best thing for the or customer. Or to make you my partner. Yeah. Or to make you, to collaborate with and do business with you. I have no other reason or purpose to be on any of these mechanisms. And so many people would hear that though and think, man, this guy's on there for his own selfish reasons. Truly at the end of the day, the best thing for the customer is to buy your stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on there. Well, I'm on there. Well, if they don't buy my stuff, I can't be get better. So I can't take care of my family. I can't take care of myself. I can't take care of my brand. I can't expand. The most unselfish thing a person could do is expand. Do you, you think know, it's selfish to build a following? No, you have to build a following. You need to build a following, right? But but that should just come. That should happen. Like, if the content's good, if you're consistent, if you're frequent, if you're there, if you keep delivering, the following's going to happen. <clears throat> it's probably not going to happen as fast as you want it to. And then you got to figure out: is it the following you want? Yeah. You know, so so. You know, Floyd Mayweather's got 22 million people follow him, but. Is it any good? Like, like I don't know what it does with him. Like, does it do, do? Does it do business with him? Does it transact with him? I know guys with big followings. There's no, but there's nothing. Nothing happens as a result of the of, of the following. So you on the uh, is Floyd rich or is Floyd broke? Which which side? Are I, you don't on? Know, I don't know. You know, I think Roy, Floyd. I think Floyd ends up broke. Ends up broke. If he doesn't, Invest it's not. It's not you. a Floyd thing. It's not a Floyd thing. It's an asset thing. If you don't end up in assets, you end up broke. Yeah. So because you can't keep fighting forever. So if Floyd was watching right now, what would you say to him? You know, Floyd, you need to spend as much time working on your investments as you do in Neiman Marcus or the Gucci store, the Fendi store. Like, he could so, just invest so, with you, though, right? He could invest to Cardone Capital. You know, I, I mean, I would ensure that he's a billionaire. Wow. Like, you, 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 you cannot become a billionaire without assets. Assets that produce cash flow. Amazon, Facebook, these are asset plays. These are real These are internet as a, a real estate place they're, they're, the the real estate's happening in the internet now so so you, you you need i need places for people to go right so uh, starbucks is in a real estate play mcdonald's is a real estate play it wasn't a hamburger play and i need places for people to go and do transactions to transact so facebook's that instagram's that netflix is that and these all produce cash flow now, I can't go find, I can't go create Facebook because I don't have the intelligence to do that. I can't do the next, that thing. But what I can do is I can go buy 300 units. You know, that's a simple business. It's not complicated. There's no technology. There's nothing to produce. I can go buy a great location, 300 units, make sure it's rented full. We take care of the tenants. It cash flows. And then we distribute back to our investors. And how that, often that's what you, Floyd would do. Floyd would take yeah. whatever money he's got. And we would, we would basically, my recommendation to Floyd is, Floyd, do not be liquid. You do not want liquidity. Never show uh, a king bed uh, of cash again. Okay? It's, it makes you look stupid. Okay? What, what would be smart is if you show somebody 38 acres of real estate that produces cash every month. And say, look, I own that. And I own this one over here, and I own that one. I met him just uh, two or three weeks ago. And he's like, you know, I, 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 I got some penthouses. I said, no, you got this much of a penthouse. I own the whole place. That's the difference. Call me when you're serious. <laughs> Enjoy Neiman Marcus. Yeah. So when it comes to some of the newer entrepreneurs, I see that you – like you were talking about sticking with the things that you're really good at that you know. You're not great at building a Facebook, but you know these things have had to invest Well, no, I'm saying simple. I can't build the technology to build the next social medium, right? I'm not, yeah. I'm not the guy that's going to go build some. I'm not going to take – I'm not Elon Musk. I'm not, I don't have this technology intelligence. But if I want to create wealth, what I can do is I can buy, simply buy a piece of real estate. I was just making an example of like, I'm not that smart guy. Yeah. But when you were getting started out, there was probably less options. Even when I lost no, weight, I talked about I had 60 pounds to lose. I didn't have a Facebook ad hitting me. I didn't have uh, a friend who wanted yeah. to train me. Yeah, I yeah. saw one kid eat fruit and I said, he's pretty fit. So uh -huh. I ate fruit only for six months and lost the 60 pounds. I wow. had no clue wow. what else to do. Wow. Now I see people that see social media marketing. They see e-com. They see all the things that you've accomplished. They want to do all of it at the same time or whatever. Uh -huh. They don't know really what to go all in on. If you were to kind of get back into the shoes of now with all these options, how would you discover what to go all in on with so much opportunity now compared yeah, to back so, in the day? I mean, I would say that those, those things are just 
they're just the things of today. That's not the issue, right? The, the, you're like, oh, I got to go down this, the highway or the Instagram. Okay, that, that's really just a way to get someplace. You need to, make, you need to understand why you're going wherever you want to go. Like, like the issue is to make the commitment to the trip. And like you're saying, man, I'm, I'm, uh, man, I can't believe how hard you're working today, right? You know, the, the, this is not Instagram and Facebook. It's from one room to the next room, one room to the next room. Like this is as small as you can get. I mean, the next, the next uh, smaller thing from this is me to call one person right now. So I was asked in an interview today, hey, if the Instagram went down, you didn't have your jet, and something else, something else had to go down, what would you do? I said, I'd make a phone call. Because I'm not dependent upon Instagram or Facebook. I'd, I'd walk across the street and go meet somebody, one person at a time. And because people solve problems. Like, I need people. You know, why, why are you building a following? I need people. People make your life richer. And some people make your life poorer. But, but your life can't be rich by, by yourself. You could be the richest person. You could be the rich man in Babylon by yourself. You're going to be a poor person. Like, nobody to share it with, nobody to have fun, nobody to create memories with. So I think the thing is, like, people shouldn't be looking for mechanisms. Oh, I need to become an Instagram fan. No, no, dude, that's, that, be, be, you're just serving Instagram. Where are you going? Why are you going there? What do you want to do when you get there? And, and, and that's kind of what I'm, I am extremely focused on where I'm going. And how did that unfold for you? Was there ever times that you didn't really know what was coming next, but you just kept pushing? I know that for a lot of my friends, one of my friends in particular, he was selling network marketing shakes, right? Weight loss shakes. And then that taught him how to talk to people. And then he got into his wife was a fitness competitor. And then they created their own fitness product. And now they're at 25 years old. He's doing $5 million a month. Yeah. Wow, and, wow, but it was awesome. He didn't know what but, was but, coming next. He just kind of kept yeah. pulling on the string of what yeah, was in front yeah, of him. That's an right. Opportunity. That's right. And so, so is the target money? Is it finance? Is it for him? I think it's achievement. Uh -huh. He's already passed the finance so young, and he can buy whatever, and he still sees himself making that number one weight loss company, Lady yeah, Boss. Yeah, shout out. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, but what's the score, right? Because once he gets the finances and then he becomes the number one, what's the next score? What's the score for you then? What's like the uh, – how did it level up? Yeah, so, like, you, you know, when you start having little victories – you know, like, like I see a lot of people say they learn more from failure. I don't learn more from failure. Yeah. I, I want to avoid failure. It's a bad way to learn. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, like if, you, if, you, if you get married and you're like, I'm going to learn more from failing in my marriage than succeeding, like you're going to end up with a bunch of divorces here. This is not going to end, end pretty. You can't. Oh, I'm going to fail with my kids. And that's how I'm going to become a good parent. No, you're going to, you're going to, your kids are going to rehab. Yeah. So, so in real estate, if you fail in real estate too many times, you'll end up with no real estate. But, but all these beautiful little memes around, like I learned more from my failures. That's Steve Jobs after he made, like Apple has become a fucking world phenomenon. And now Steve's like, I learned more from my failures. But look where he was saying it after the fact. Yeah. So people need to succeed. So I would, for me, like every time I get a little success, I'm like, I want to, I want to blow on it. I'm like, okay, I want to do that again. I want to repeat it. And then, then I repeat it. I'm like, wow, I can do that twice. I can do it three times. I can do it four times. The real estate, what happened with the real estate was I bought a piece of real estate and then I bought a second piece and then I bought a third piece. And I'm like, this real estate works when I don't work. I could be in Australia. I'm going to go to Australia and speak. I'm going to be there for a month. That real estate's going to spit. It will not know I'm gone. It does not know Grant changed locations, nothing. Just bang, bang, bang. I'm like, I need to repeat the real estate, repeat it. And the next thing you know, I end up with, I go from 600 units to 800 units to 1,200 units to 6,000 units. And I'm like, wow, how, many, how much of this can I buy? Okay, who's got a bunch of real estate? Well, the big guys have 140,000 pieces, units. I'm like, man, could I go there? And then if I, if I went there, why? Oh, wow, because I could now, I can't spend the money I have, but now I could start helping families. I could start helping not people where they live, but I could let people, I started learning the game of real estate, right? Well, the game of real estate is the best real estate in the world is owned by banks, insurance companies, and Wall Street companies. The middle class families in America don't own any of the good real estate. They own a house at best. And they're like, I love my house. I love my house. That's not the best real estate in America. That's what goes back to the bank, 
when the banks decide, hey, we're going to take it all. They've been doing this since the 1800s. The banks were taking ranches away in the 1800s. They'd lend you money. You couldn't make, make it because of the cattle, because there was some, you know. So they would take the ranch back and get the money back. That's what happened in 2010. They took everything back. They redistribute the wealth. Blackstone ends up with everything. So what I'm doing with Cardone Capital now is you get bigger and bigger. You start saying, how much can I influence things? Oh, wow. And then I stumbled across, I'm going to build a 40 or 50,000 unit portfolio. And I'm not going to use Wells Fargo. I'm not going to use Blackstone. I'm not going to use Goldman. I'm not going to use the life insurance companies. I'm going to push them off to the side. And I'm going to go to my audience on Instagram and Facebook and give the people that actually need access to these deals, these deals. Then we're going to take the whole thing. I might be thinking too small at 40,000 units. Maybe, it, maybe, maybe I become the top one or two. And we give it to America rather than the banks. And then we, we, go, we as partners go to the bank and sell the whole thing to them. So you feel like your motivations have changed as you've grown they, to new they, levels. They, they mature. You know, yeah. they mature. I can see more. I can see more possibility, right? I can see, I can see better because I did more. So for a lot of these guys out there right now, you talked about basically. You know, that, when you oh, lost your 60 pounds, you weren't thinking about adding abs and, and having biceps when you were trying to lose weight. You're just like, I just want to lose weight. Exactly. Then I got lost weight and I thought I need to bulk up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you talked about basically summed up in a quote, a wise man learns from his mistakes, but a wiser man learns from other people's yeah, mistakes. Yeah, yeah. I think it's something along, yeah. it's almost accepting defeat and allowing yourself to fail and thinking this is an okay thing to do. I've had people come to me and say, Nicholas, I did what you said. I wanted to run in an event. And I, I did everything that you said, but, you know, I got half the amount of people there, but I learned from it. And I'm like, no, you should have been so scared to not fill up that event that you should have filled it up. Like, yeah, it, was, yeah, it was totally yeah. doable. Yeah. And I feel that, uh, that if you teach yourself, and I want to hear your opinion on this, if you learn from failure, life knows that the only way you're going to learn and the only time you're going to get that yeah. beat in your head is through uh -huh. failure. Uh -huh. I'm too scared. I'm like, every day I wake up and I go, I'm, I want to learn th from success today. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. how I want to learn. Yeah, yeah. Make me successful and open my eyes so I can keep being successful yeah, yeah. not have to lose it all yeah. and build it back no, up. I don't, don't, don't want to learn like that. It, it's just going to beat you up. But how many people that follow you, that listen to you, are allowing them to sell, themselves to live by that rhetoric of, Failings, okay, I'm learning from my failures. It's okay to do it, but yeah. how does one graduate to now going, I'm quit, not quit okay listening. with my, me quit failing? listening to so many people. You guys out there, like, if you're going to follow Nicholas, like, you can't follow Nicholas and 17 other people and think that you're going to benefit from what he's telling you because, because something somebody else tells you, oh, but I want to get, you know, no, but no one person's got it right. Yeah, but you're, you're, your people are eating from so many different plates. They don't know. I would rather one piece of bad data than 17 pieces of right data. I can do more with a bad piece of data if I'm confident in it than 17 right pieces. You know, there's, a, there's an old adage about what's worse than, than um, two, uh, one great general. No, no. What's, what, what's worse than one bad general? I'll get this right. Um, two great generals because now you're not going to make a decision. It's the husband and the wife that must talk to each other before anybody makes a financial decision. Hold on. I can't do it right now. It's a great deal, by the way. But I got to go talk to somebody because we got an agreement because there's nobody in charge. And, and uh, I was doing this interview. Y'all have that agreement? So, so um, I, was, I was doing this interview up the street, and, and this woman says, what do you mean? I said, well, when I bought the jet, I didn't call my wife and say, hey, should I do this? I called her up and said, I just bought a jet. <laughs> and she's like, Oh my God, what is it? I told her. I said, sent her pictures. She's like, Oh my God, that's amazing. I didn't call and check with her because I already had that agreement. Well, the woman that I told that to was like, Oh my God, we would never be married. I said, Well, that's a fact. We're not married. I'm already married. Okay. And you and your husband have the agreements you have. And the agreements you guys have is not to make decisions without talking to one another, as opposed to my wife and I have already have the agreement before we make the decisions and the agreements in my household is look man if you think it's good for us you freaking do it and and so if she's with the kids and she's making a decision about something to do with the household i don't she doesn't need to check with me i trust that she is going to do the thing that will push us forward so then when things go wrong how do you guys communicate through that maybe she makes a decision 
And you know, I'm she like, hey, let, let, let's tale. correct that. Let's correct that. Like, like let's don't do that you again. Too. Same thing with me. Hey, you did that. That didn't work. You know, and and um, yeah, it's already look. Being by yourself, just the complexity of one individual making decisions every day is so complicated. Sixty trillion cells in, in one body, right? Sixty trillion cells, all of them intelligent. There's none of them that are dumb. Tremendous intelligence going on in the body, right? That we don't even know anything about. Like, like their entire universe is if you saw them under a microscope. Then there's, then there's add another person to it. We, dude, we're going into freaking crazy land now. Because now we got 120 cells. And, and this is why when two people get together, there's so much like, okay. And then add the in-laws. Oh, my God, man. Now it's like, wow. <laughs> then add the old, all the old ideas, you know. Yep. And, and the same thing that's going on in Instagram right now. People, people are Facebook or whatever, right? So, so people are getting data. They read your book. Then they read Man Up book. And then they read this book. And then they read Max Out. And then they read 10X. And then they read Relentless. And then they, they're like, okay, it sounds all the same. Like people need to pick something and, and say, this is my deal. You know, like when I, when I study guys, I study, like I don't read 17 books. I'll yeah. read everything Warren Buffett. I'll read from the beginning to the end. And then I'll go back and read it again. So rather than reading 17 books, I'll read one Warren Buffett book 17 times. Smart. Until I understand what he was really saying when he wrote those words down. Because he might regret those words later. There's a chance what he wrote won't be right later. And so what, what did he really mean? He, he's not perfect either, right? So I'm trying to figure, but, but he's done good. So I could, if I understood the genius behind the genius and where he was in that process. It's like the 10,000 kicks. I don't fear a man that knows 10,000 yeah, yeah, kicks yeah, yeah. or one kick. That you do 10, that, yeah, times. that was Bruce Lee, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We'll call it Grant Cardone for now. Yeah, know. no, but it's not. So. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, and my wife as well. This is something that a lot of the guys deal with. They either want to have a relationship or they're currently married, have a family. Yeah. And the first time my wife and I invested in our education community, she wanted to swipe our credit card for five grand. She was at a table just like this. Yeah. And the guy goes, no, you're so broke. You're not allowed to do this unless you call your husband because they're just not used to someone wanting to swipe that card. She called uh, me. It would, I'm not educated in the moment. I'm not feeling the emotions she's yeah, feeling. Yeah, 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 How yeah, can I make yeah, a good decision, even yeah. in your business? If you went to yeah. Elena every yeah, time, yeah. Elena, I just had this thing come across the table. It's $150 million. Yeah. The logical thing would be, well, don't spend $150 million. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. she doesn't know what's going on in that deal for the guys out there that maybe don't have a wife involved in the business. But every time they make a business decision that's big, they call their wife and say, hey, there's this investment. I, I want to invest with Cardone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, honey, that's a lot of money. And he's like, oh, man, Grant, you know, my wife isn't sure. You know, she just yeah. doesn't know. Yeah. How would she know? How would she? So what advice would you give to those guys? How do they retake that, retake well, you, that you know. position in the family? You know, you're not measuring my. Inv you're not measuring Cardone Capitalist investment right now. And right now, you're 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 getting tweak. You know, tweaked about all the bad investments you have made, but more importantly, all the bad investments are the great investments that you didn't make. Oh, uh, we bought a deal once and it didn't work out. Yeah, but I guarantee you there's another ten deals you should have done that you, you you passed on. Like. You see, people remember the wrong things. They remember the car wreck. They remember the one, uh, somebody swiped my car. Right. Yeah, but you drove to that same destination a thousand times and never got hit. Why don't we remember those? Right? So, so you see, people just pay attention to what they did wrong as opposed to what you didn't do at all. And so, and then when they look at the deals they did wrong, oh, I bought a stock once and it went down. Okay, well, good. You also bought a house that went nowhere. You know, why'd you buy that house? Why do you have equity in a house? Well, well that's a good deal. Maybe you don't, maybe, who told you it's a good deal? Because the guys at the top of the food chain aren't buying houses. So what's your mindset around this quote that's, Successful people should have more fear for missed opportunity than failure. A lot of people are so scared to pull the trigger because they're so scared to fail. Yeah. But they're missing, you just talked about, they, they're missing opportunity yeah, after well, like, opportunity. Like, like, like look, we're, we're trained to buy houses. We're trained to save for retirement. We're tra trained to leave cash in banks. Uh, I was doing 7,000 people in Atlanta the other day. And I said, how many of you have money in the bank? 
you know, two thirds of the room. I have money in the bank. Well, you, you, why would you want money in the bank? You have more confidence in Wells Fargo than you do yourself. All that money should be invested in the enhancement of self. How many of you have money in, in equity in a home? Oh, you know, half the room. I have equity in a home. They're proud of it too. I'm like, why would you have equity in your home? That only benefited the banks. You borrowed money from a bank to live in one place that you call home and you're proud of and you like it as opposed to like, wow, why, what if I had that equity? What if I had that money, that 80000 invested in my business? How many have money in retirement accounts? Okay, probably a third of the room had a retirement account of some sort. Why, why would you have money sitting in an account for, for when you're 70, 60, whatever the retirement age is, 63, when you could have that money working for you right now? So it's a way we've been programmed and trained too, right? To, to trust somebody else that we're, we, we can't trust ourselves. Uh, diversify your stocks. Who, who was that for? Who did that benefit the most? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's not what the wealthiest people on this planet do. They put all their eggs in one basket. The richest people that have ever lived on this planet, one investment, and they watched it, and they made sure it worked. Railroads only. McDonald's only, right? They, didn't, they, they weren't in uh, uh, 700 different stocks. The creation of ETFs and mutual funds was for Wall Street, not Main Street. It was not for the middle class. It was on the backs of the middle class to make Wall Street rich. Because nobody can figure out 700 different investments. Again, confusion. Confusion of the masses. Hey, don't, don't. the ETFs is going to be the biggest. The biggest uh, redistribution of wealth in America will be the collapse of ETFs. There's trillions of dollars sitting in them right now where masses of people have been tricked, hoodwinked by Wall Street to say, put all your money in right here in these mutual funds. My man's sick over there. He's like, fuck, I, three of them. He just hit the dam. I got cash in the banks. I got... I got equity in the house, you know, and, 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 and I got uh, ETFs, okay? It will be, when, when the old man Bogler died, uh, Vanguard, the founder of Vanguard, he says, when these get too big, they will fold. Too many people will try to exit at the same time. So all that goes back to what? It goes back to like, how many different places you getting your data from? Warren Buffett does not diversify. Mark Zuckerberg did not, did not diversify. Uh, Elon Musk, he's not a diversification guy. What, what was the first company he sold? Was it PayPal? Where did he make his first money? I think so. Yeah, I think it was PayPal. We can verify it. But. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he gets a score. And what's he do? He invests a bunch of money in SpaceX, a bunch of money in Tesla, and, and then I think it was the tunnels. He didn't diversify. Dude, these are three things he put all his money in, and then he rented where he lived. He doesn't even own a home when he does this. He's like, I don't want a house. I want my money working. I want to make an impact with cash. Yeah. I don't know if that's too much for you guys out there, but man, it's a lot for you and your girlfriend to talk about. Yeah. She wants a house. So I just want a house and I want to be happy and we're going to have little babies and we're going to get a little, we're going to put her at the Cardones live here, but who's coming to your house? Nobody's coming to your house. You know, so uh, Damon John said, man, your jet's a terrible investment. I said, my jet is a better investment than your house because my jet will take me places. And your house goes nowhere. Okay? Nowhere. Well, it's going to go up in value. Uh, wrong. Wrongo, Damon Jono, Shark Tanko. Okay? Wrong. Okay? You pay 6%. The seller paid 6% to the broker to buy the house. I'd love to see what you guys think about this. When you go to sell the house, there's another six points. He's like, well, I didn't pay the six points when I bought it. I said, well, it came out of the proceeds of the house. You paid for it, okay? When you sell the house, it's another six. That's 12%. you got to make 12% on your house just to keep up with the brokers, okay? You live in New York. It's 2.6% per year for property taxes. You live there 20 years, that's 40, I'm sorry, 52%. So you got six, you got six, that's 12, plus 56. You have to make 68% to break even with brokers and the property taxes. You hadn't mowed the lawn. You hadn't painted the place. You hadn't fixed the place. And you hadn't made a payment yet. Interest rate on a, on a home today is about 45 to 5%. So 5% for 20 years, that's 100%. Who made all the money in this deal? The brokers, property taxes, and the bank. You'd have to make like 168% on your money to break even on the house. So what about some of the entrepreneurs that are like, it feels so good not to have the risk of payments. So I'm going to go buy my house, 
pay for it outright. Yeah. And that way that I just don't have a lot then of you, risk. Then you're not an entrepreneur. You're yeah. a homeowner. Let's quick get a t-shirt and say, hey, fucking entrepreneur, scratch it out. Homeowner. Well, Russell Brunson did that. Fucking He's stupid. Like, I, want, I want low. I don't, low get, I don't care. Fucking stupid. Yeah. Russell, stupid. <laughs> I know more about money than Russell does. Okay. Russell might know about funnels. Stupid. Dumb. Ridiculous. I got five kids. So what? Go rent a big ass, big ass penthouse somewhere. Okay. Let your kids tear the place up. Rent it every 10 to 12 months. Leave it. The landlord doesn't treat you right. Walk away. I, I live uh, on the ocean in Miami. Uh, the other morning, some storm comes in. I rent there. 30, 30, there's 30, 30 people that live in this building. And uh, I drive up, drop my cars off. They park them. I, I hit 33, go straight to the top. I don't worry about anything. Something goes out. Hey, fix it. Hey, you hadn't fixed it yet. That's, that's the most I get involved with this property. I wake up one morning. I go work out. There's a gym in the, in the, uh, the property. Trainer meets me there. I do the workout. I look outside. There's furniture from the pool. It's all in the pool. Okay, I go out there, I Instagram it. <laughs> Somebody's got to clean this up, but it's not going to be me. Now, if that was my place and it was torn up and I had to worry about it, I had to fix it, it would take energy from me that day. Okay, so Russell, what Russell's doing, Russell, I hope you're watching this. What he the entrepreneur is doing by, by, by taking money out of his business and buying his house, he's trying to reduce his risk because he actually does not have certainty about the future. He's planning for something to happen bad. And if you plan for something to happen bad, it will happen. So what I'm doing is I'm basically like, I don't want to own a home. What I want to do is I want to own lots of real estate or anything that produces cash flow without me having to touch on it. Right? Like, so because Russell's got a business that produces a lot of cash, but he's got to push on it for it to produce cash. And I, I have businesses that produce a lot of cash, but I want the cash that comes from those businesses to go into apartment buildings where I don't have to push. It doesn't matter if I'm dead or alive. They'll still provide income that I can live off of. And, and, and when my businesses fail, at some point all businesses fail. When my main businesses fail or end or terminate or whatever, those, that, 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 that income will continue to, to uh, pay me. So if I died today, the thing that people should be asking, like, let's say you're married. And one of you died today. Would you sell the house? Well, we don't own our house, so yeah, I'm, okay. I, I'm doing the would right you thing. All would of you sudden. move? Would you move if I died? Probably not. You'd stay where you are. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so if I died today, Elena would probably she'd wait for the lease to end. Boom, blow out. Yeah. It's no reason for her to be there anymore. Yeah. Okay. Let's say the kids. The kids are going to leave. We're, they're ten and eight. They're going to leave here in about probably six or seven years. As soon as they can, they're going to leave. Eight years. We don't need to be there anymore, okay? So the kids leave, I die. She's dumping it. it. means it's not an asset. It's a liability, right? Now, would she sell my real estate, the apartments? I die. <laughs> She's not selling any of that stuff. Nah. She's like, she'll sell the plane. She won't need it. She won't be traveling like that. You know, so, so the, you know, what is an asset? What is a liability? Again, again, where do we get our data from? You know, and the entrepreneur, by definition, entrepreneur defined by the, by the dictionary most entrepreneurs haven't even looked up. They're like, I'm an entrepreneur. You don't even know what it means. Right? So it means a person or, who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. Not less risk. That means if you're an entrepreneur, you're not spending money on marketing, branding, uh, uh, inf uh, influence, collaboration, like what you're doing today. You got to spend a lot of time, energy, and money just coming to do this podcast. The, you're taking financial risk. Financial risk is not just money; it's also time, time and money. So, how many times do you hear entrepreneurs talk about planning to fail? I w and I want to unveil this because if you they're say saving it, money, they're saving money. I'm like, dude, like, like what yeah. are you doing with money in the bank? Why are you playing it safe? Go, oh, because my, you know, because my parents, because the parents are saving money, right? So. Like, I grew up in that environment where save your money, save your money, save for a rainy day. A penny saved is a penny saved or earned, right? Yeah, yeah. So everything was about saving, buy a house. All that influenced me so that when I was doing business from 29 to 45, all I did was save my money. All that money, all that money should have been reinvested in the business all those years. It was the biggest, one of the, one of the biggest business mistakes I made was saving money, pulling money off the table. 
I had a retirement account when I was 20, 26 years old. Completely insane, man. I bought life insurance when I was 19 because my dad bought life insurance. But what, what do I need life insurance at 19 years old for, dude? Yeah. Right? What do I need a house for? It, I bought my, my, my first house I bought. I'm, t- I'm talking from experience of mistakes. Right? Yeah. I bought a house when I was 28 years old. What do I need a house for at 28? I need to be. I need to be out calling on people at 28. I need to be hustling at 9 o'clock at night, not settling down to watch TV. But, but buying a house is the American dream. Millions. There's 5 million homes in America underwater today. You're bad, making me bad. look at America as like one big business trying to win and trying to convince everyone oh, totally. to do what they want them to do totally. so they can win. America, America is basically a bunch of banks selling to... One clientele, the middle class. Anybody that makes between about thirty grand a year and probably four hundred grand, maybe maybe even more. Like the middle class is massive. Okay, it's the biggest problem in America is the middle class. It's not poverty. It's the middle that can't get ahead, and it's beca- it's going to become more and more of a problem. So you hear the politicians talk about the me- uh, a minimum wage. You know, the guy that's being paid eight bucks an hour. That's not really the problem in this country. It's the guy being paid $58,000 a year because there's no money left over. But all the laws are made by the banks and Wall Street. So everything, all the messaging we get, you know. But the millennials, you guys are going to change the whole game because you're not buying the bullshit anymore. You've seen your parents stuck, unable to move. Yeah. You know, you're like, you're, you're the last, the la- you, you guys don't even want a house. No, nah, no one even thinks about it. And then, and then there's people my age that are starting to say, wait a minute, I owned a house. That, that wasn't such a great deal for us. I mean, I'm just stuck in it. They don't even want the house anymore. They're bored with their own house. They're like, I just want to travel. So you, for the first time, you have like 150 million people, 80 million baby boomers, and 75 million millennials all saying, the last thing I want is a house. I want to travel. I want adventure. I want to, I want to learn stuff. And, and so that's going to disrupt the system. So we have massive disruption in automobiles, housing. It's going to create tremendous opportunity for all, all the guys that are following you. I appreciate you sharing that as well. Yeah. Because we want to follow by someone's direction. I, I feel that one of the ways that we can not have learned from failures is to learn from people like yourself, which is why I like doing the interviews, yeah. why I like hanging out and bringing this content to, to people that's not – Again, not the BS for the people to get stuff that's actually real. And the entrepreneur, the entrepreneur, you'll, you'll be much more creative when you have passive income coming. Like, like the thing that really freed up my creative juices was being on, be, knowing when I wake up in the morning, I have income coming from other sources. It gives me it gives courage. Leverage too. Dude, it gives me courage. Like, yeah. like I can take a risk. I can spend more money in advertising because I got this stream over here. Yeah. You know, like like Jay Z is so bold right now because him and Beyonce don't have to go do the concert anymore. He doesn't have to be the prostitute, right? So you, you don't have to go sell your services anymore. He's got these other streams coming in. He's got this other talent. He's got these other businesses that are providing flows. So it's it's a lot easier to be courageous when you're not dependent upon one flow. So you have be obsessed or be average, ten x and. All of it's kind of like different angles to say the same thing, which is going all in. And a lot of people, they, they want to put in the least amount of effort for the most amount of result going in. And it always takes more than what they thought. And this is just what I'm seeing even from our guys is they go, oh, Nicholas, I want to do this. And I'm like, no, like just do more than that. Like be okay with doing a lot more. And you actually inspired one of my mentors, Navy SEAL, retired Navy SEAL, one of the baddest ass dudes I know. Most disciplined, and he listened to your entire book, Be Obsessed or Be that? Average. Who's that? Yost Jansen. Okay. He works with uh, on, on all the Hollywood sets and on Iron Man, 13 Hours, yeah. all that stuff. He actually shot uh, with your wife, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, at some of the ranges. He trains like all the people how to do everything with the guns. I'm butchering it, but that's what he does. And one of the big things is that you're also fit. And a lot of our guys right now, they go chase money and they chase building their business. And they get overweight and they get out of shape and they start getting lazy. And then they go, oh, man, I need to, I need to get back in shape. So they get back yeah, in yeah, shape yeah, 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 and then yeah, their yeah, business yeah. starts kind yeah, of yeah, failing. Yeah, because they spend two and three hours in the gym. Yeah, we're saying and, – and I heard you talk about that. Don't spend so much time. Be effective. And inside yeah, this yeah. book, I'm like, I want to teach these guys how to have it all. You have it with your wife, your kids, and you've set boundaries. You've done it with your health. 
and then you go and crush. How can these guys start doing this right now in their life to be three dimensional to have the yeah. correct amount? Because you're not, you're no, you know that your family and your health right now is contributing to your success. Yeah, totally. And these guys just they're blinded, right? Like you said at the beginning, they're seeing like right here. You need money, man. How, so like, how, like to have life balance, you got to have money. Like, yeah, this is the taboo thing to say. It's never going to be on TV. Nobody likes. You got to have money. Nobody, nobody ever says this. Yeah. Oh, you, I do this. I do that. I have blah. I do, dude, you got to have money. You can't. You can't. You know what? What do I mean by that? Like, okay, well, like create the life you want. Yeah. Quit saving money. You know, quit buying watches and H belts. Like, I don't have an Hermes belt. Like, I didn't even know how to pronounce Hermes. I'm like, well, who would spend <laughs> seven, eight hundred bucks on a belt? Like, yeah. like, I could buy three thousand dollars worth of real estate with a seven hundred dollar belt. Right. And who am I trying to impress anyway? What I need is I need a trainer to come to me. So you buy your Hermes belt. I'm going to buy a trainer to come to me. I don't want to go to him. Okay. I don't, time is money. It's not money is time. It's time is money. So why am I going to get in a car and drive to, 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 to the trainer here? You, I'll give you another 200 bucks. You come to me. Okay, you come to me, I walk down there, I do my workout, boom, I'm done. Well, he's, he's still driving 40 minutes, and I'm already taking a shower and, and, and doing a business deal. So you got to figure out the things in your life. You know, when I, when I, when I went from, okay, I'm never going to do, I'm never going to work for below my pay grade anymore. Like, this was a big shift for me. Like, I like gardening. I like landscape stuff, right? When I got rid of a yard, I was like, that, was, that, that probably made me 10 million bucks. I loved it. I spent too much time doing it. It was costing me money. It was below my pay grade. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what, what am I doing? What am I doing? Like, oh, because it's therapeutic. Well, good, man. Like, like not two hours of it. It's, it therapeutic's costing you millions of dollars because you're out there playing with stuff. That made me feel good and everything, but there's got to be a faster, better way to do that, to get that sensation. So how did you switch that? What are your hobbies now? Everything. What I did was I took everything below my pay grade. Everything below my pay grade. It's like, what do I? Okay, the kids are going to school. We're driving the kids 40 minutes to school. I'm like, why am I bringing my kids to this dumbass school? School's beautiful. I'm like, look at the money it took to build this school. I can see when we're driving. It's a private school. My kids are six and eight at the time. I'm paying 25000 a pop. I'm paying fifty grand a year to send my kids to school, and I don't know if they're learning anything. Like, I have no clue what they're learning. Probably a bunch of voodoo. Uh, and so we drive over there. I'm like, why am I driving them there over there and on the way back? So I'm like, hey, why don't I just homeschool the kids? They can roll with me. My dad died when I was 10. Yeah. I didn't get any time with my dad. None, zero. Like, I, don't, like, I d never knew him because he was going to work every day trying to take care of the family. Yep. Because they were doing stuff below their pay grade. On the weekends, he's mowing the lawn. That was below his pay grade. He went from stockbroker earning eighty grand a year to a guy earning two bucks an hour. Like, what are you doing that for, dude? You could have been spending the time with me. Instead, he's riding his little snapper more, because that's how he thought. Right? Wow. He was washing his car rather than having somebody else wash it. Anything below your pay grade. Not that you like. I do stuff every day that that I don't want to do. Yep. Like I'll make a phone call. Is it below my pay grade? Maybe, but I can get the deal done, right? So will Tom Brady run the ball in? Not his job, but if he can get those say, bad legs, not fast, isn't going to look good, but dude, it'll get us six points, he will run the ball in. So, so I'm willing to do the stuff that's not in my media era, but I'm not going to do something anymore that going to the grocery store. I actually like going to the grocery store, but it's kind of below my pay grade. Yeah. Hey, Send somebody over there. Now we can just call it in, right? Yeah. So, so I can have somebody else do the cooking. So make a list of things that you can do that, that keep you in entrepreneur mode all the time. Keep you on the goal. Yeah. You know, and, and say, hey, I take, get rid of all the stuff that's a way for you to avoid the definition of an entrepreneur, which, which is manage a business or businesses and taking on more financial risk than normal in order to grow something. So with the, with the being obsessed part, that's what I feel that is, I'm not that talented. We've been able to fill our own live events, yeah. fill our own programs. And I see guys out there that have a better transformation than me. They're better than I am at communicating. They've had, they have better material than mm -hmm. what I have starting out. I know a guy and right now lost 150 pounds and I'm like, please just, 
do the stuff to get the message out there and yeah. sell the product. Yeah. How, how do you instill or what's something that we could do to shift a mindset here to tell them what it's going to take, the obsession that they're going to need? Yeah. You need, to, you need to tell people the truth. Like, people should be terrified. Yeah. Every day, people. I wake up every day. Okay, the economy is getting ready to fall apart. Yeah. The world is going to come to. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, 2010 will never so you happen. you allow like fear and stuff to motivate you. No, no. I, I, I basically, I, be, I, I basically mock up possibilities. Yeah. Like, like true scenarios that could happen that would threaten me, my goals, my dreams, my life. I told the lady that night. I said, "Look, I need you to get. There's a little bracelet online that's got. Uh, it's got your family. It's got a black band. It's got your family members' names on it." I said, "I need one with four. And she's like, well, who's the fourth one? I said, your name, Scarlett, Sabrina, and my dreams. And so every day my dreams and my family are at threat. And so I'm mocking up threats in the environment, the economy, okay, Trump, uh, the Democrats, the who knows, dude, like Bernie gets elected, shit. Uh, these whack jobs, like Trump stays in, like uh, who knows, like it, it's all up for you grabs. You like any of them? Bernie, it's all, it's, all, it's all crazy. Like it's all crazy right yeah. now. Okay, we got an economy that's like you got a stock market that's at twenty seven or twenty eight thousand. Like pe- people invested in it, like it's going to double again. Like really? Uh, we've been ten or twelve years or eleven years, I guess, since the last economic contraction. The next one's going to be brutal. We have twenty two trillion dollars worth of debt. This is what I do to myself every day. Everybody's running around like you got guys your age driving two Rolls. I just finished an interview with a guy's got fucking two Ferraris and a Rolls Royce. Yeah, I'm like this is insane. Yeah, common, huh? It's common. Oh yeah, kids 30 years old, 25 years old flying private. You know, paying oh, yeah. thirty thousand to fly private. I'm like this is insanity, dude. Yep. So you know everybody knows it's insane, but nobody's nobody's doing anything about it. Nobody's talking about it. You got you got you got people that have that likes are more important than money. Can't yep. take it. Can't, you got you got guys on online that can't take care of their girl, but but they take care of every Instagram comment. Yeah. So so I would just I would scare your audience, dude. Hey guys, uh, the modern day businessman, businessman, business, business. What kind of business? Failing business, break even business. Sixty four percent of businesses in America break even or lose money. Yep. That means 64% of the people made a decision to go into business and it's not working. You know, so some of that is like, hey, should you even be running a business or should you be working for somebody else? You know, like may, may, maybe you could actually go further with someone else. Yeah. That's what, I mean, you have some of that inside of your company. People but, that would be phenomenal. They're, I got, they're I, dominant people. I got guys that will make hundreds of, hundred X more than somebody that'll work for themselves. I got guys that work. I got one guy that worked for me. He'll be worth million, tens of millions of dollars that he would never, ever become worth on, on his own by himself. Last question though, for my wife and I, God has been like a big thing that has driven our business. Uh, what the reason we got into business is because of him. And I was like yeah. praying and nothing happened. And yeah, I thought, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. God hates me or something. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, I realized he, I needed to build a skill set. And then I built a skill yeah, set. Yeah. Now there's like a partnership for you. There's so many like rumors that go around that are like, what does Grant Cardone believe? Right. Yeah. Anyone successful is either yeah. an Illuminati or they pray to the devil or, they, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, it's yeah. like crazy. Right. So yeah. what's been the influence for you and, you and know, for my guys? Thank, as well, thank like, you. The spiritual spirituality is the number one, one most important thing to me in my life. Like, my, before my wife and my kids is my understanding of God. Yeah. And, and my dreams come from that connection and that understanding. And my, my dreams and my goals are not really financial. It's potential. So, so, so when I talk about, you know, people ask me, the, the, probably the most painful question I get is, when is enough enough? And I'm like, man, you guys ought to check in with God on that. Yeah. Right? Because, because my, my potential is what I'm going after. It's not, it's not some number. I got a guy asking me about my net worth. I'm like, dude, what, what, it's a stupid question. It's an ego, it's an ego, it's an ego thing, right? I, yeah. What I'm interested in is my potential, possibility, discovery. And, and, and for me, that potential is the thing that strings me and God. And that potential is my dreams. It's like, what, what could I do? What's possible? 
And the, the other thing is about the blessing. You know, you, you hear people, I was in Atlanta, I'm like, man, I'm blessed. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, praise the Lord. I'm like, yeah, everybody's blessed. Everybody's blessed. I've never met somebody that's not blessed. Most people are not proving it, though. They're blessed and not validating God every day. Wow. So uh, I, I have a very, very powerful, very strong, and very clear uh, understanding of my relationship with God, and it is first and foremost with me. Other people won't understand it, right? But 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 I every every day every day every deal undoing a deal, like I've undone deals. Hey guys, this deal is no longer good for me, and that was me at my my highest ethical. What do you mean? You got a deal? We got a deal. You signed a contract. That's right. And now we're going to undo this deal. And I'm going to undo it. We're going to talk about it. And we're going to figure it out. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, hey, this deal is not good for me. And if it's not good for me, it's not good for my family. It's not good for my future. It's not good for my, my ability to give to charities. It's not good for you either. So rather than me just walking away, why don't we just rework the deal so that we're both happy and everybody wins? Very difficult thing to do. But you allow that because to be another person, driver. because another person might be bound by that agreement. They're like, no, no, we have a deal. I have to do what I said I'm going to do because they're bound by some rule that they made some agreement. Hey, if that agreement's no longer good for you, no God would want you to continue. What you'd want to do is communicate, which is harder to do. Yeah, you know. So, so the ability for my wife and I to communicate about anything, even if it's tough, and it's you know, it's. You know, believing in God is more than just believing in God. It takes courage to to go out every day and validate it. Because if you actually believe, you have to do. And you ought to do well, too. And if you have a, you know, to to me in my mind, like, you know, if I have have a good, really strong, good working relationship with God, I would be successful at everything. Physically, in my marriage, in business, with my customers, online. I would have good reviews, not bad reviews. Yeah. Like, you ought to have the whole package. I don't think, I don't, I don't think God had par- a par- partial package. I think it was probably the whole deal. And the other thing is the work thing, you know. Like, I see a lot of people that believe in God that don't work. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, but, you know, they're taking two and three days off. God don't even take that much time off. <laughs> <laughs> he takes one day off. Yeah. Look what he did before he took the day off. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, and you and, got it, brother. And everyone watching as well, make sure to follow Grant. I actually saw someone invest thousands, probably tens of thousands of dollars for 15 minutes uh, just to have a video call with you. And you got the insight on this. So what I would love for you to do is you just got this for free. Go and buy everything this guy has. A lot of times you could buy the whole package. You buy every single book, every single thing. Consume, go all in on what he's doing, or else I wouldn't have brought you in on the show. This is a good guy to follow, a good guy to listen to, and I appreciate you being here. Come on, man.